Welcome back to GM Worldwide Radio. This is Unfiltered, presented by Street Smart Society. As always, if you need any help with your graphic design, graphic arts, or video editing, hit up Street Smart Society LLC on Facebook or streetsmartsociety.com. You know me, Jay Skyline, my co-host, Ann James. We got a very special guest in here today, man. We do. We usually get producers, we get comedians, we get music artists, all that. We got a combination today. Yeah. We got somebody who I just personally found out is extremely musically musically talented. Thank you. Yeah. And this man is a football player in the NFL yeah. at the same time. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Rontez Miles of oh, the New no. York Jets. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Good. Thank What's you for up? coming through. Thank I know you, you got a, no got a busy schedule while you in town. Yeah, you're running around crazy. So uh, I'm going to let my co-host get in because I know he has some questions he wanted to get off yeah. real quick. Mine is a dog and cool. Yo, yeah, he does the first thing. He's like, what the, what the hell? Yeah, he can't. So it's hard to bang with that. To his credit, you deserve it, because I, I don't even understand why you wore that. <laughs> you a Dolphin fan? I like them out of the division. I, is that your favorite team, though? No. Okay, we're going we gonna to get this out of the way for you. Okay. This man is the most fair weather fan of all time. He has a favorite team in every division. That's kind of crazy. Yes. That's kind of crazy. But, like, there's, like, Steelers 50%, and then the rest is, like, dwindled, like, like the percentage. So why do like, you like the Dolphins than anybody else in the division? In that division? We're, like, the, we're like the, the hard nose team. I would team say that, you know. I would like you guys number two. <laughs> I feel like you just said. Page, the Bills. Everybody I mean, the hates Bills, the Patriots, though. The Patriots, yeah. Shout out to Tom Brady. Go. So, all right, I yeah. respect Tom Brady a lot. Yeah. Go. I can't, I can't let them take all the shade. We're going to get both of our demons out now. Okay. My demon was I picked y'all before the season not to win again. <laughs> yeah. So he was one of the haters. Yeah. So, yeah. no, but you had a few of those. But I will say the one thing I can say is y'all, for five wins before McCown got hurt, y'all was one of my most impressive teams of the year just because of what I didn't think y'all could do to what right. y'all were doing. Even the games y'all was losing, y'all was in it. And we lost <laughs> probably a handful by the last minute or two yeah. in the game. And you take those away, you know, we're in the playoffs, but that's now in there. We'll be better this year. So, <clears throat> Um, first and foremost, because this stuck out to me when you came in, because it's warm in the city for the first time. Yes, the Steeler tattoo. <laughs> I get that Making a lot. Making you a hard time over uh, the Jets? Uh, when I first went to the Jets, it was like, what, 2013, Rex Ryan was the coach at the time. And he yeah. said some a couple guys, but um, it faded. It went on. But you got to realize I'm from Pittsburgh, born and raised. And probably without being here and watching the Steelers grow up, I probably would have been a football player. Like, the Steelers kind of pushed me into liking football as much as I had. So, like, I mean. The city made me who I am, so this tattoo was way old, way before the NFL combine came around and everything. So they said something about the combine, but you know, it's a business. Yeah, yeah, I get the media out. Before it was a business, what got you into? Well, what level of football did you start? I started little lead. Uh, I was up my mom's butt too much, and one of her boyfriends was like, "He gotta go. Like, he gotta go outside and do something." So I guess he gave me an option. You know, like, man, I'll do that. They got helmets on, they hitting people. I don't know what it is, but I'll try that out and. I was like six, seven years old. Shout out to Big Harry. Uh, that's his name. And um, I don't know. It just stuck. It just stuck, and I never stopped. When did uh, when did you finally tone down what position you was going to play? I would say about ninth grade in high school. I went to Willow Hills High School. Right. Mm -hmm. Played with Bronk. Bronk graduated with me that year. Um, Monte Simmons. Both of them guys played in the NFL. And um. I played running back at first, and then I moved to linebacker. I went to West Middleton for a year. I played linebacker and running back there, and I realized I like hitting people more than enjoying like getting hit, like more than getting hit. So, um, and I'm kind of an aggressive guy, so I'm stuck. Like safety was perfect for me. So that's interesting, especially with a guy with your build. It seems like when guys have the athletic build, because dudes you like me, they don't give the, you the skill position. They, yeah. Well, the skill position with the ball. Yeah, so you, the ball, right. you, you were cool with just being like, I don't need the ball in my hand unless I'm catching it from well, the, the other side. Well, the problem was we ran a pro style office in high school. So we ran the ball 90% of the time and then maybe throw a streak or two. And I'm like, I, I don't like waiting on the ball. Like, I don't like blocking. Mm -hmm. Like I was one of the, probably the best blocker on the team because I was aggressive, but I wanted the ball too. So like, I think it was like the fourth game in my senior year in high school, I was leading the team in reception and yards, but it was like, Novak ran a George Novak. Shout out to George Novak, Williams High School. He ran a very prestigious high school program, and it's like he got you ready for the next level. Right. So he said, you're going to be a defensive player. Like, and I believe that, and it worked out. So it was okay settling for that. How was it coming out of the uh, – coming out of Cal U and going to the combine around all the guys that were from bigger schools? <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Honestly, like, I didn't know nobody there but the Honey Badger. And me and him actually swapped jerseys. That's my dog. Shout out to Honey Badger. Signed with Texas. Congratulations, brother. Um, he was one of the few guys that was talking to me, like, nice for real and everything. And 
I can tell you right now, I didn't know nobody there but him, my brother. And I think Tavon, uh, Tavon Austin, me and him at the same agent, went did a couple of events before the combat started. So um, shout out to Tavon Austin as well. Those was the only two guys I recognized, not only for film, but actually was around them guys. And um, it was it was surreal, man. Definitely, I'm probably, I think I'm the only player at Cal history to go to the NFL combat. I wasn't like transfer from the SEC and already had clout. Like I played all my college years at Cal. And, um, got invited. Played in Texas versus the nation, which is an all-star game. And um surreal. Like they come from a school that small and just take everything else head on it was, it was a big deal for me. And I, I mean I like the challenge though. What was, the challenge. what was the phone call like when they said they wanted you to come to the combine? Well it was an email. It was an email? Okay. And um, I'm leaving uh, my cousin Tyree's house and um we were just talking about the football. So like, don't worry, you're gonna figure it out. And I was ranked in the top ten coming from D2 on the NFL a draft board. So in my mind, oh, I'm getting drafted. I don't know what's gonna happen, everything's happening, but things start to slow down after the season. You know what I mean? And um I made a highlight tape and I had a guy sending them out to all the uh head scouts. And I think that's what did it for real. My highlight tape. Check it out, Ron Tez Miles, my college tape, probably the best tape you'll ever watch from any safety. Um I just remember leaving my cousin's house, me and my ex girlfriend at the time. Uh, we were driving back home and I had an email. I checked it. it said, You've been invited to the NFL combat. And I remember parking the car and jumping out and running back into my cousin's house crying, like telling him Tyree, shout out to Tyree. And at that point, I knew I was with him opportunity. Moving forward, you yeah. went through the combine, you went came through undrafted, the yeah. Jets came through and got you. Yeah. From there, from what I've been looking at, you seem to have like the beginning of the James Harrison story going on. Like, That's happening. I was about to say, like, because I'm reading it, like, I, I don't. It's a lot. Like it's practice squad team, practice mm -hmm. squad team, but they seem to be they seem to rock with you. Like I feel like yeah. you know whenever they say, Hey, it's we gotta let you off the roster, you know you're cool. Like, is that how you feel with the Jets and the organization? You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a tough ground for undrafted players coming from small schools, man. They don't I mean, people don't see the outside of it. And it's, in my since I've been there it's more so undrafted, you get a few chances if you're a first round draft pick and they pay you money and politics and you know, jersey sales, whatever it may be. You're gonna get your, you're gonna get the upper hand. You're gonna get the first chance to shine, and I think I killed it every year I've been there and deserved it a shot. But um, that's here and there or there. You know, what I mean, I have my opportunity sooner or later. Yeah. Still got a solid five years left for me to play. I mean, I, I'm about to sign back as, as we speak. And, um, everything is fine, man. But it's definitely been an uphill battle, and it's just like I had a guy, safety name uh, Adams. I think he played for the Colts, undrafted Division two guy, and he's just told me like it's always gonna be an uphill battle for you. No matter how good you do, no matter what you is, you're undrafted. The name wasn't as big as this guy or whatever not. So um, we still got good young safeties that's on our team. Jamal Adams, Marcus May, they're, they're very advanced for their age, coming from the SEC. And um, right. they're going to be fine, though. But, you know, I'm looking to do my thing still. I've been in there long enough, and they got to drag me out. Like, it ain't easy to get me off the field. So, Who would you say would be the teammate that you think that you're the closest with that uh, has helped you through this? I had so many close teammates, so that's kind of hard. But there's actually only three of us still on the roster since I first stepped into that building. You know, Bilal Powell's one of them, the running back. BP, um, Brown Winters is another guy. Um, they were one of the guys that came in my class. And um, Bilal came in before me. But um, me and Bilal, BP, been real close, 29, as a running back. You know, mm -hmm. He kills you guys all the time. Oh. The dumb <laughs> but um, me and him are really tight, man. I just went to his wedding. I'm going to the Kentucky Derby with him for the first time. And, um. That's a guy that just really, since I've been there, he's pushing Bibles down my throat. He's telling me how I should invest, telling me what's good and what's not. And that's just a guy that I, you know, I really, I think I'm close to at this moment with everybody else that I came close when I'm gone. That's my dog right there. Shout out BP. All right. All right. So these questions, these next couple questions are just going to be like my goofy questions. What are you doing? Um, <clears throat> Rex Ryan's foot fetish. How's this, how was that around the locker? Or around what? Foot fetish. Like the no uh, one. <laughs> he, he would never bring that in the locker room. You got guys in there 6'8, 280 pounds ain't playing that. He never brought that around. So okay. I ain't never had, I didn't even know you had a foot fetish. That's crazy. Okay. How'd uh, you know that? It was a pretty open thing. It was like a picture uh, of him sucking his wife's toes or something. Got out. Uh, that's his wife. That's his wife, though. He supposed to suck them toes, man. So you supposed to do when you marry, man. You know? Wait till I get married. I'm looking at everything. Um, <laughs> ah, I forget the other dude's name, but Geno Smith and the, uh, the jaw situation. Uh, that's a touchy situation. Sure. Shout out to Gino. I respect the guy that did it and the guy that received it. And was both my guys and I K. And I won't go into that, but um, it's something that shouldn't have happened. You know, we wish we could have stopped it, but um, you know, both of them guys are still doing good right now. So shout out to them guys. Uh, Josh McCaffrey, just like in general. 
I love Josh McCown. I love Jay. I judge Jay. They look, that's my dog. And he's really athletic. People don't know that. Yeah, I like a little swagger to him, man. He's tall as hell. You know, and, um, <laughs> he cares, though. He really yeah. cares. He's passionate. And I feel like he found a team that is willing to back him. And he's, he was dying to get back. And when he got hurt, you could see it in his face. and crushed him. And he's just a great guy. I remember I cursed or something around him. <laughs> my bad Jay this is me you know what I mean except me but he always told me I'm a great leader and he's happy I'm on the team and everything I remember I told him I'm happy you playing quarterback for us right now you know, that's my dog so he's a great dude um in his short time there um uh, was there any practices where you had to go up against Brandon Marshall another yeah, Pittsburgh I used uh, to strap B <laughs> like in um no but Brandon Marshall one of the greatest receivers I ever got to step on the field with I covered him every day you know what I mean? For the last two years, he was there, and I got him sometimes. But it's Brandon Marshall; he won't get you. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah. you gotta respect that. But um, that's another guy that was uh really big inspirational for us, like pushing the team. Like I remember he gave a speech before we played Buffalo uh, his last year there at the uh, the, uh, the color rush game in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And man, he gave a speech so crazy. Everybody, everybody in the locker room ain't care about their life. Nothing, nothing else they matter. We gonna hurt to die for this. And you know what I mean? He's a great leader. Speaking of that, because there's some news that came out yesterday, the NFL's deading the color rush. Yeah, uh, I've seen that. How do you feel about that? My first career start was the color rush. Okay. Uh, so you three, was over three seasons ago in um, well, first Buffalo. And so you part. were in the colorblind game. When the That's game. what people call it. <laughs> yeah, the, Christmas, the Christmas game. I heard so many names, but um, that was my first career start, and um, I, I got that actually at my point right now, friend. I think I joined a friend and did the second color rush game. My brother came home from prison, and I um, actually gave him cleats and that same jersey so the color rush even though they're taking it away it means something to me because this is where i started at and i still got memories so it's okay with me okay so you didn't hate it that much no i didn't hate it it was fun you gotta think jets ain't got the best unis now come on now our, our unis are boring they just finally started wearing white cleats teddy white shoes that's my name shout out to ron i wish i was still wearing them up. afl joints i did a couple years ago yeah they ain't, i mean you know we got boring unis so anytime you get to switch it up no matter what it is you want to accept it you right. know what i mean so it's all cool um, Todd Bowles being one of the few black NFL coaches in the league, and no one that I feel like they were trying to no push out last year. I felt the same way too. I mean, I don't want to go deep into that, but you know what I mean. It's like the schedules they be giving him is like crazy. And, but he's a very he's a very humble guy. He never breaks. He never folds. And he, he's he's straightforward. He's like, man, I don't care about that schedule. I got my guys. We're gonna go to war. And um, I ain't start playing until we got. I got hurt my first two years with Rex. So my first playing time was through Todd. I remember him telling me, like, um, he told me I was one of his favorite players and he's going to get me on the field. You know what I mean? And he did that. What's the so, difference between, because it seems like Todd's quiet compared yeah. to Rex, who obviously is not. <laughs> no, Rex, I mean, Todd's quiet. He told himself, I guess, I guess he's a thinker. That's how you like to look at it. He's a thinker, though. But when it's us and there's no media and nobody around, he's very open with us. Cracking jokes, he's a regular guy, you know what I mean? But when it's when it's business, he's, he means business. Same with Coach Rex. Rex is a great coach, probably some of the craziest defensive schemes I've ever had to learn in my life. I couldn't learn that playbook still to the day if I had it. Right. But he always said, if you can learn my playbook as much as you can, any other playbook you have will be easy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what he meant, so I got another playbook, and he's right. So he's a great coach. He's just a very passionate guy, man. And people probably take that for him being cocky or loud, but – my first uh, camp, 2013, he cried in the first meeting. Like, he really cares about what he believed in. And um, he's a guy that I can get you to go to war from against New England or anybody. And that's why he gave New England hell while he was there. He okay. he make you play for him. Um, I got some few questions. Um, so in the league, you've been here for a while. Who's your top five safeties? It can be over all time if you want, even just in general. I, I mean, got to play with Ed Reed for Ed a Reed. year. My rookie year, he came in. He came in for five weeks, had three interceptions, man. And he could barely walk in practice how old he was getting. But his knowledge and his, like, like he had that Rex Ryan, that passion, like a Rex Ryan passion that was contagious, man. And he shut down all the cockiness in the room and people respected him. And I remember somebody getting hurt, like, oh, they're probably going to activate me. Like, I'm about to play. You see Ed Reed walking in. That's like, you can't be mad at that. That's Ed Reed. I'll, I'll stay on practice for a while. <laughs> when it's Ed Reed, I sat literally right next to him. And I just remember just looking at his notes, taking notes, asking him questions. And, um, and he's one of my favorites, Troy Palomalu, um, Cam Chancellor, big fan of Cam Chancellor, uh, Charles Woodson, and uh, Rontez Miles, of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, is there any receiver or quarterback in the league that you would love to shut down? Tom Brady. 
I don't need to say nothing else. Yeah, that's, you I don't see, have to say nothing I see him twice a year. I'm tired of it. All right. Win. With that being said, <clears throat> you played with Gronk for the one year. Did, yeah. Now you guys like play defense and offensively. Yeah, like, I play, you yeah. Know, I go against him all the time. Now, does he now him playing then? He showed up more whenever you guys maybe play whenever Patriots Jets games. Yeah, he's on, you, he's you call him out. Like, I'm, I'm getting Gronk. Or, oh yeah, well, last game last season, uh, yeah. Marcus May got hurt, so I had to cover him the whole game. I don't think he had a catch. <laughs> yeah, right, right. so we doubled him too. I'm not gonna take all the credit. We doubled right. him underneath and I was over top, but we, we doubled him and I don't think he had to catch the whole game. And um I tell him the whole game, you gonna give me your goddamn jersey. Yeah. You know, give me that we end up swapping. You know, yeah. Shout out to Grump. What's up, bro? You know what I mean? But he's doing his thing, he's probably gonna be one of the greatest Titans ever lived and most richest and highest paid Titan <laughs> ever. So shout out to Grump for uh, accomplishing great things. But. As long as he's not getting robbed. Right. Yeah. He's got robbed. Yeah, he got robbed uh, after the Super right during the Super Bowl. No, they robbed his house during the Super Bowl, like on some weird, like he was at the Super Bowl. And That's all about me. No, he's not. He's not home. Let's get him. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, it wasn't no safari type stuff. <laughs> I was say, yeah, I must say, I don't think nobody would run up on Grump, man. That's a big deal. Uh, what is your biggest improvement you think you made off this offseason? Uh, music. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Music was, I focused on that a lot. And, um, mm -hmm. You know, working out, we all worked out earlier today, too, though. You know what I mean? It's the same as my six, going into my six off season. You know, and, you know, it's just football. We about to be back to that, and I'm about to tune back into that and do all of that, though. But, man, we've really been pushing this music, man. And we got a talented bunch of guys that the world need to hear. So that's what I've been focused on. And this was our biggest stretch from now. We got a listening party with uh, Rock Nation, April mm -hmm. 26th. Um, and we got a lot more to come. So I'm excited. Okay. I have two questions off of that. Yeah. One, <clears throat> Is the team cool with the music side of things? They actually played my video in Todd Bowles' office last year when we shot last time to me and our bank assist. And like it was cuss words in it, but you know, we're not talking about selling drugs or killing nobody. We're not making bad music. I'm 29 years old, cursing is normal, but um he was cool. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I think the music being the quality it was in the video, he was like, okay, you're not just our bullshit. Yeah, you know, so at least you're really doing it and you're not talking about anything negative. Um, other than being fly and being successful and taking advantage of you know the life I've been blessed with, so he, he really liked the music. Crazy. Other thing, it's kind of a dual question because I've always heard this thing that like NFL locker rooms are split between like country and rap. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> you got to they, they do a good job of mixing it up, man. And do you like, get yourself you get yourself in that rotation? Oh yeah, I've been in rotation. Come on, I play mine. I'm trying to get on the uh, stadium music. I'm okay, okay. That. that's my next goal this year. So. You know, get a clean version for the stadium and everything, and um, the entrance music. Yeah, it's something nice for yeah. the guys to turn up to and everything. But um, yeah, them, them as goals we having now. But uh, the music definitely you got to make sure you keep everybody happy. Some of the guys, you know, the guys like, come on, put some uh, kid rock on or something. You know, we like, man, put some young thug on. Or but we do a good job of balancing out though. We got, we got, we got what y'all need to do, make everybody happy. Not only Tim McGraw. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> um, that to the country right yeah. yeah. I mean, I ain't saying this music bad, but I mean, that's not a, that's not a bad one. I, 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 I was just fucking around. But, um, <laughs> but no, like I said, it's, um, like I said, it was always, that was one of those things I always heard everybody else ask. Yeah. I'm like, what is the Jess Locker Room banging? Like, is Josh McCown up here sitting down listening to Jess? Just, well, uh, we do got a rule, no music before 11. That's like the barbershop. And that's like the old heads made that rule, but I don't care. You turn it on. I love music. I listen to it all day, but um, no rap music, actually. No oh, rap oh. music before 11. So by the time we can get there at 7, be there a little point up before 7. 7 to 11, you got gospel. You got real uh, soothing music. And then as soon as 11 hit, the old heads know. I let the young guys. There's a lot of young guys on the team. Mm -hmm. There's music from down like south and Texas and Louisiana, so we made the mixed culture is so crazy. You're going to hear everything. Like I found out, that's what I'm saying. Like uh, Shao was saying earlier, we got so much music, and so much uh, time invested in other places. You can't help but to learn and hear other styles of music. So. Um, with any uh, change of change of roles in the NFL, has that affect your gameplay or will affect your gameplay? I mean, we do. They do a good job of explaining the rules at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. If you really care enough, you'll remember. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I mean, there ain't nothing different. I mean, I just hope they be more nice to DBs. Mm -hmm. like, we got a bed. Like, you can't touch, can't do nothing. And I think it's hard for the DBs in the NFL. And it's a scoring, offensive passing lead now. So yeah. that brings the fans. But they're, like, limited us to making plays, I feel like. So, I mean, 
I don't know what's gonna happen with that, but I think they're about to be more lenient mm-hmm. with the calls with the, for the DBs. But if you have defensive back, it's probably the hardest thing to play in the NFL other than quarterback. That's my opinion because these guys is running four ones. Well, no, nah, not guys that six eight <laughs> running four fives, yeah. <laughs> jumping out the gym, and I can't touch you after five yards. I can't even. Sometimes some of the calls are so fishy they can still go to the offense. Uh, so, nah, between. I mean, you've been in the uh, East the entire time, so they yeah. make safeties guard. If you're not guarding a wide receiver, you're guarding a running back or a tight, a, end. A tight end. Yeah. And the people that have been in your division between Gronk, uh, Jordan Cameron was there's down in Miami nice for a little guys, while. Man. There's some nice tight ends. Uh, Charles Clay up in Buffalo yeah. been there the entire time. Like, you got some – I can see where you're talking about. Like, it's, it's hard. Man. It's hard, but, you know, we make it work. So – um, we about to wrap this up, but I want to make sure you get all yield tags in here real quick. So let everybody know how to get a hold of you. Uh, easy, man. Raw Tez Miles. It's easy to follow me. Uh, make sure y'all follow uh, BH. We're going to be starting a music page now. Um, like I said, we got a lot of things coming now. But if you just type my name in Raw Tez Miles, you can find me anywhere possible you can find me at. I mean, don't go searching too deep. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got skeleton. Please give uh, Jordan's team a hard time, the Rams, if you ever had to play them in any Oh, we beat y'all. Yeah. We beat y'all. You remember yeah. that game? I hit your boy on a uh, one yard line. Uh, yeah. The tight end. Yes. Yeah. 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 Get in his own. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's true. Yeah. 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 Again, the difference, the difference between you and me is I respect him. I'm like, I'm coming yeah. here to interview oh, him. Oh, no. I'm not out here to respect him. Um, I no, I was geeking when he started talking about Tavon, though, even though I think yeah, we need to, nice. we got to work on his contract. <laughs> but, um, oh, also, because I know y'all used to us doing interviews when we taste this food. That's happening, but it's going to be happening on the Facebook Live in like a few minutes. He got him and all his boys in here. James, let them know what you brought here for them to taste. Two eggs, ramen, it's some mild ass shit. All I'm saying is I don't think anybody, anybody here is ready, but some people say they are. So jump over to wait for the Facebook Live. That'll be in a couple minutes. We'll be right back here on GM Worldwide Radio. Yeah, yeah. It's unfiltered. Again, yeah. thank you again. <laughs> Ron Tez Miles in the building. I'm, I'm, I can tell you, I'm geek. It's my yeah, first time interviewing an NFL yeah, player, and I'm geek. Thank you. Fuck your hat, though, buddy. Uh, BH, baby. <laughs> we out. <laughs> <laughs>